harkening back to the days of Pearl Harbor in uh, 1941, uh, December 7th, as I recall, uh, I was probably 15. Uh, I was squirrel hunting with a cousin <laughs> at my grandfather's farm down by Tidal. And uh, when we finished up our hunt that day, came back to my grandfather's house and sat down and the radio was on and this announcement came to you about the bombing. And of course, nobody in our group that day and probably lots of other groups knew where in the heck Pearl Harbor even was. And so we sat there and listened to every bit of news that we could get over the radio, which was probably really limited compared to what it would be today. But uh, eventually, everybody, when we got back to town, everybody was talking about what had happened and what happens now, what do we do, when do we do it? And uh, everybody was quite concerned because of the immense amount of damage that was done to our naval fleet. Uh, as time went on, bits and pieces of additional news came out, but everybody had, as Don indicated a while ago, had to co commence living with these restrictions that were brought about because of the potential shortages uh, that were going to occur. Women went to work in the factory, uh, building ships and building airplanes. Uh, men left going to service. Uh, kids continued to go to school, but they lived under always the issue of what, what's going on? Where do we end up? Where does this all end? Who's going to win and when are we going to win? And nobody had answers to these, uh, these questions. As time went on and the carnage continued and the horrible stories about that were coming forth about how the Japs were treating the American prisoners and, and uh, the retribution we were trying to to accomplish to get the war ended, it would all became a, quite a horrifying story. Uh, eventually, we did get to that day when it was declared over, which was in what June. I can't recall whether it was in June or not. But uh, you, you talk about. Uh, I don't know whether television was in effect at that time, but it must have been to some extent because I, I do remember the various big praise, big gatherings, everybody very happy it was over. And uh, the big the big story of the day, I guess, was uh, the picture of the sailor kissing the nurse in downtown New York in, as the celebration continued. <laughs> uh, eventually, it, it began to ease down some. And everybody tended to relax a little bit and tried to return to some normal state of life. That's kind of the way I remember. Well, I don't, I don't remember whether it was a big, a big celebration or not. But there was a celebration everywhere when the war was over in Germany. And uh, I don't remember here where we had. I'm sure that we was out in the streets and hollering and all that sort of stuff. Uh, I think it's just a question of yeah. people slowly regained their confidence that things had settled down and were going to try to return to normal. But I know, I know we came out from that movie in the Abilene, and they announced it in the papers. I had all the war about Pearl Harbor, and all the forty-fifth troops had to go back to camp and. They were in camp for a long time until they got recruited up and decided what they were going to do with them. And, and then they started training to go overseas. And uh, when they, well, I know when uh, the bomb was bo uh, dropped, I think uh, uh, John and I were in. We we had finished boot camp, but we were, hadn't been a, a, assigned anywhere yet, and and we were there in San Diego when 
when they dropped the uh, atom bomb. And they figured that, uh, well, I know it saved us from having to be small. We were going to small boat school to learn to take the invasion troops into Japan. And after that, why, they decided we were going somewhere else. And uh, so there was a, a celebration then, even when they dropped the bomb, even though the war wasn't over. Well, it was over a few days after that. But they, it was quite a celebration there, and you couldn't get in anywhere. And I don't know how it was in Claremore, though. Uh, specifically, I can't remember any incidents occurring in Claremore in a way of a celebration. I'm sure sure there must have been. Yeah, so was, we were just all glad it was over. And I, I was so glad I didn't have to go to one of those small, bo small boats because, boy, I ended up being on an air aircraft carrier, which was great. We made six trips across the Pacific bringing troops back home and then and then we uh, <clears throat> took carrier uh, air groups out and trained them for a while and then finally we put that carrier in mothballs up in Seattle and I came home <laughs> and I don't know I don't know where I'd ever leave this place or not. <laughs>